One of the first interactions I had, like knowing that LGBT people existed, was that the park that was like five minutes away from my house, two uh, lesbians who were on a date there were shot by someone from the community. There were two girls who were attacked and, and shot, and one of them died. And you know, they were gay. That was before we, long before we knew about Charlie. I think for most kids who end up transitioning, it was a little bit obvious that there were LGBT or trans or, you know, and I was one of those kids. Uh, in the schoolyard, Charlie always played with the boys. He was more into video games and things like that uh, before he came out. Before Charlie came out to me, I, I, I didn't know, I didn't know anything about uh, transgender, didn't know anybody who was transgender, didn't know any parents who had transgender kids. I, I was about 12. <laughs> That's when I came out. My parents were hopeful that I was just, it was just a phase, that they didn't want me to transition. They were terrified what that would mean. It felt like they were losing their little girl. The first reaction when we came out, you know, is that we love you. Um, uh, my next reaction is the fear of how the world will treat Charlie. You know, just, just not knowing what that meant, not knowing what was in front of us, not knowing how the world was going to treat us. I, I feel like I said all the wrong things when Charlie first came out. Just like, are you sure? <laughs> you know, I mean, things like that. It's just, it's awful to be scared. It's just awful to question every relationship you have with every person in your life and, you know, and think back and think, how are they going to take this? How are they going to treat my child? Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's all my friends. Yeah, it, it, it is like a mourning period only because I gave him a name. <laughs> and you think you know your child <laughs> completely. And you find out you really, really don't, you know? And, uh, so yeah, in a way it was a morning, I guess. And, a, and then, you know, when you see old pictures, sometimes it hurts. Just because it's, um, I feel like I can't take those pictures out anymore. I mean, I completely think of Charlie as male. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I really don't think of him as any other way anymore. But, but it was hard and it was scary. And that is, that was hard because I just didn't know how he was going to navigate the world. I, I just didn't know how you navigated anything as a trans person. Over time, my parents realized that the way to keep me safe was not to take me away from my transgender identity, but to fully embrace it. And I think they just ended up coming to the conclusion that there would be issues, but they would have to just stand up for me a little bit more. And most kids don't get that, and I'm very lucky in that regard. I, I find it more unusual and more confusing that somebody would reject their child because of this. I mean, you know, uh, true love is unconditional, right? I mean, God's love for us is unconditional. And so it pains me, I guess, I, I cry at Disney movies also, So, but it pains me to think about um, kids out there who, who are rejected um, by, by the people who are supposed to love them unconditionally. That, that just, that, I cannot mentally get my mind around that. And it saddens me, it angers me that, that somebody would be that way with their own child. Slowly, I was able to transition with the support of my parents. And I won't pretend it was an easy ride. I had to be quite patient and I ended up electing that I would wait for them and whenever that time came, I would be able to fully transition. I would be able to fully be their son. 
I distinctly remember my mama getting my first binder. I went out clothing shopping with her and I still have the first ever shirt I ever bought that was infirming. It's this gray button down that we bought from Dillard's at the mall. I started a gay straight alliance at Vets, and we found out that at Vets, any organization can nominate two people for homecoming. That whole day was very frazzled. I had to put together the float myself. As the parade ended, we all gathered around to hear the uh, announcement of the nominees. They announced the four other guys, and I, I knew my chances were dwindling, and then they said my name, and I was standing there with all of my friends, and I could just hear screams. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for your top five. Ladies, top five gentlemen, congratulations to them. Don't forget to buy your tickets for the homecoming party, the homecoming dance this Saturday. I became the first ever transgender man to ever make it. You know, Charlie making it onto the homecoming court was just so mind blowing. Again, I mean, that's one of those times where you go, it's gonna be okay. Life's gonna be okay for him. Homecoming night was just like so exciting. It was a really great experience up until the point where this group of kids behind us. They were throwing bottles and trash and things like that at, at Charlie and his, his group of friends there. It was just so upsetting. It was like Charlie's night. And here are these kids trying to ruin it. My wife went up there with her teacher voice and got them to <laughs> stop. Then we just sat up there <laughs> and, until they felt like they needed to leave. Mama walked with me across the homecoming field. It was just so surreal to walk across that in Texas, in South Texas, with a pride flag sash that said homecoming. You know, hearing the roar from the stands and people shouting his name, and it's like, he's making a difference. I never did it. I was, you know, it's like, you're awesome, Charlie. <laughs> it's hard to live your truth. I just think he's one of the bravest people I've ever met. 